welcome back everyone it's me Matt hope you're having a wonderful day really appreciate you stopping by on today's video we're talking about the T-15 Armata a Russian infantry fighting vehicle that is strewn with controversy secrecy and technological advancements in Russian armored fighting vehicles of today but before we talk about this beautiful infantry fighting vehicle, I'd like to talk about our game sponsor today, Fishing Clash. I actually like to go fishing when I'm not making videos around my local lake. And when I find the time, I enjoy playing this game that keeps me engaged in my hobby when I'm away from the outdoors. This is a fun and visually stunning game that provides you with an interactive fishing experience where you can explore multiple locations from shore or from the boat. This game also provides upgrades for your rod and skills to catch more advanced and more challenging fish that are tempting your bait and your hook. There are weekly competitions and events to keep you wanting to log in and find your next big catch, and you can even create an event and clan up with up to 50 players to play with friends, including me! So add me as a friend under the name Matsmus. There are lures, power-ups, sonar, special licenses as more. I really encourage you to check out this game, I thoroughly enjoy playing it on the side and to enjoy that distraction in your day where you just want to get on your phone and do some fishing. If you're interested in playing, make sure you use the gift code MATSMUS to get a special reward for a value of up to $20 which is available for new players only. With my gift code you'll get a 3 star rod, 1 mythical lure, the dolphin fish, 50 luck power ups, 30 weight power ups to help you catch bigger fish. And of course, what are you waiting for? Download Fishing Class and start reeling in your next big catch on your cell phone today. So let's get back to talking about this vehicle, the Russian T-15 IFV. Now I have done a video in the past of the T-14 Armata, the main battle tank variant of this vehicle, but today's focus is on the infantry carrying version, which is quite a unique and I find quite a good looking, sort of a sexy little uh, infantry fight vehicle overall, but very different to what we're standardized used to from Russian doctrine. Now during the Cold War, of course, a confrontation between NATO and the Warsaw Pact countries was expected to be dominated by tanks, so Infantry required transport to sustain the pace of an advance while maintaining that armament to fight off other armor and to withstand machine gun fire and artillery fire. The Soviet Union developed the BMP-1 and BMP-2, which we know quite heavily about, and the United States developed the M2 Bradley, a huge amount of a development, may I add, at a huge cost. While IFV supplied troops with mounted weaponry, the ubiquity of anti-tank rockets and guided missiles made such protection uneconomical. Rather than maneuver warfare, most post-Cold War fighting took place in urban settings such as that of the Russians experiencing Grozny. While significant losses can be accepted in near-peer war, with the ease of insurgents that can inflict casualties of targeting IFEs has become a challenge for most IFE operators. Some countries, such as Israel, have experimented with adapting tank hulls to carry dismounted infantry in order to field better protected troop transports. The Russian T-15 Armata hull is based on the T-14 tank hull, with the engine moved to the front to make more room for passenger compartments in the rear. This modified engine arrangement gives the crew more protection against frontal strikes. The troop capacity is estimated to be between about 7 to 9 troops depending on the amount of equipment and the kind of equipment they're carrying. The vehicle is slightly heavier than the T-90 main combat tank weighing about 48 tons, and it is built to have an entrenching blade as well as the other T-14's multiple cameras and sensors that have been given an array of protection suites on board. The T-15 can carry around 1,500 rounds of ammunition, including 160 armor piercing rounds and 340 highly destructive fragmentation rounds for just mushing up infantry. The T-15 was primarily built though as a transport with the capacity of up to a dozen soldiers with minimal equipment with three crew members. There is no true NATO vehicle comparable to the T-15, it is quite unique, and even the Israeli-built Makava, which is essentially just a large tank that can carry a few infantrymen, may be the closest counterpart. The T-15 on the other hand is significantly more heavily armed and a better troop carrier than obviously the Makava, which is designated to take out other tanks. The T-15, unlike the real tank version of the Armada platform, has a remote-controlled Boomerang EM Epoch turret at the back of the tank. While the engine is located at the front, providing that extra support, this turret is completely autonomous. This has had the added benefit of allowing the engine to protect the occupants from frontal collisions and just giving that a little bit more protection. I know there's a lot of people out there that debate about having extra protection of a vehicle engine. Is it that protective? Well, it's a gigantic chunk of steel and it has some space in between there, including liquid for oils and things. Not a huge amount of protection, but still something. 
In terms of its production designs in armament, the T-15 can be outfitted with the following. The Boomerang BM Epoch Remote Control Weapon Station with a 2A42 30mm auto cannon with a 7.62mm coaxial PKT and a bank of two 9M133M Cornet M anti-tank guided missiles on either sides, just in case it runs across some of the infantry fighting vehicle's worst enemies, main battle tanks. It can also carry the AU-220M Bacal remote turret-equipped 57mm autocannon, the BM-57, and the 9M121A attacker ground attack-guided anti-tank missiles. The DUBM-57 Kinzel RCWS equipped with the BM-57 autocannon and a 7.62mm PKMT machine gun, and the 9M121 attacker ATGMs as well. In terms of its mobility, the T-15, like the T-14, is based on the Armata Universal Combat Platform, but unlike the T-14, its engine is located at the front, giving it a little bit different of the way in which it's given that combat weight ratio with about 48 tons and a maximum row speed of around 65 to 70 km an hour, or 40 to 43 miles per hour. The vehicle has an impressive operational range of 550 kilometers or 340 miles and a power to weight ratio of more than 30 horsepower per ton, powered by a new generation 1500 horsepower multi-fuel diesel engine coupled with a hydromechanical automatic transmission. In terms of protection, it really is protecting itself. The T-15, like the T-14, is outfitted with huge amounts of reactive armor and an Afghanit active protection system. While the T-14's Afghanit launch tubes are located at the base of the turret, the T-15's are located along the top edges of the hull. In comparison to the T-14's 10 hard kill launch tubes atop the turret, which automatically spins to face a threat, this vehicle employs four soft kill launchers and five hard kill launch tubes on top of the hull to drop smoke grenades that damage the visual and infrared guidance systems that could be watching it from afar. The T-15 offers exceptional armor protection, quote, from the Russian industry and the Russian Defense Service, including upgraded passive steel and ceramic composite plate armor and real slat armor caging. It does have upgraded explosive reactive armor that's said to be resistance against ATGMs such as the Javelin and 120mm tank rounds such as the German DM-53 and 63 and the American M829A3 armored-piercing fin-stabilized discarding sabos. In addition to hard kill and soft kill APS, the manufacturer employs a unique paint that decreases the vehicle's infrared signature quite greatly. The floor contains an additional armor plate for anti-mine and anti-IED protection as well as jamming devices to destroy radio-controlled anti-tank mines and even drones. The T-15 is equipped with a full MBC or nuclear, biological and chemical protective system just in case things get really sour. In terms of a quick summary though of this vehicle, it's very heavily armored. It was really built for an offensive use more than a defensive use that we see in some of the sort of western IFEs of today. Formations equipped with Armada tanks, heavily armored IFVs, and other vehicles based on the same track chassis are capable of breaching enemy defensive lines and exploiting that gap very quickly. With the speed and the horsepower coming from some of these engines, they're able to provide a very quick reaction force for a heavily armored brigade or battle group that the Russians may want to put into the field. The Russian T-15 is a very, very upgraded platform from what we see of the BMP, BM-2 series, and even some of the BMP-3 vehicles. For in terms of standard protection for dismounts and for getting the dismounts off the vehicle as well, it has a very quick deploy rate with the troops actually being able to dismount from the vehicle two at a time, similar to that of some of the older style vehicles but with a lot better protection. The new Armata Heavy IFE is far more secure in its standardized warfighting doctrine than what would be of the BMP 1, 2 and 3 vehicles. In mass, that's not the standard with the T-15. They're looking at more strategic, tactical uh, armored units that will have a number of these supporting the T-14s that can be able to provide that main battle tank assault and have these follow up behind. Recent arguments have demonstrated that older IFEs such as the BMP-1 and 2 are extremely vulnerable to virtually all anti-tank weapons of today, and these vehicles really are no longer very effective on the modern day battlefield. The Armata Heavy IFE appears to be the same level of protection as some of the higher level and even sort of you know, even medium level uh, vehicles that are coming from the Western world and keeping up to that technological advantage of the coming more advanced AGGMs. The exact technical specs of this heavy IFE are unknown, however. It's all, though, quite apparent that it employs advanced armors and defensive systems that have been quite easy to detect and see on the sides. 
Another new generation infantry fighting vehicle is the Kurznets 25. Yes, we're going to do a video on that in the future too, which was recently built for the Russian army and will be employed as a conventional infantry carrier, not as advanced and tactically inclined as the T-14 and 15 com combination of armor would be. And while the Armata Heavy IFE could be used for the breakthrough operations, these vehicles in the background will be providing sort of the follow-up or sustained uh, support to armored battle groups moving forward. The T-15 Heavy does feature that unusual layout though with the engine position in the front. The T-14 tank interestingly has the power pack to the rear. It became a challenge for designers to create that troop compartment in the vehicle's rear and as a result the Heavy IFE's front and rear ends have been completely swapped and when compared to the original Armata MBT it drives backwards in some regard. A lot of controversy is strewn around the T-15 Armada, of course, with its T-14 counterpart having the breakdown in the parade back there in Moscow. It has a little bit of a stigma to it. I would disagree that this is having any relation to that, though. Its concept, I really, really like, that they are really focusing on that full frontal crew protection, a, you know, autonomous uh, turret that they can control from inside the vehicle, and maximizing crew protection significantly total different doctrine to that that you would see of the BMP-1 and BMP-2, which I personally found, uh, you know, again, I would say, have to stand by my point that BMP-1, 2, and even somewhat 3 in terms of modern day combat capability is lacking against some of the most, you know, technologically advanced HGMs that are out there today. The fact that it has a fairly strong capacity of crew uh, for carrying is impressive as well. Though You can put 10, 12 troops in this if they were lightly equipped onto the battlefield, and with modern-day IVs, that number is shrinking because the more equipment and protection you put in a vehicle, the less space there is for anything else. And you've got to look at the profile of this vehicle, how low it is to the ground. Compared to some of the Western counterparts, this thing is like a snake staying in the grass, you know, nice and low, being able to not be seen and not being engaged. And if it is engaged, well, there's a ton of protection to its front if it is exposed a little bit from that hull down position. And if it gets engaged to the turret, well, the turret's going to come off and we're hoping that the crew would be okay from behind. But for the most part, I really like the fact that the Russians have sort of honed in on yes we need troops to the front yes they need to dismount quickly but we're going to put as much protection as we can to the crew and to the vehicle uh, and a little bit of backup on the top there with some additional heavy support whether it be you know the uh, the auto cannon or the cornet uh, anti-tank guided missile which is a very formidable anti-tank missile of today uh, this thing could do quite a lot of damage you know even if it's not in its infantry carrying role getting across terrain rough terrain it's able to scout ahead work alongside that beautiful t-14 armada tank and do some real damage with the heavy cannon and uh, the ATGMs. So I'd love to hear your opinion on this uh, beautiful IFV. What do you think? What do you think the concept is, is n you know, new and sophisticated, or is it just something that's been tried and tested and they've just sort of polished something that's been more refined as a uh, advanced protection infantry fighting vehicle? I'd love to hear your opinion. Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks again for joining me today, folks. I hope you have a wonderful day. Feel free to hit that like button and that bell by the subscribe button to be notified of upcoming videos coming in the future. And of course, please go check out the link box below for all those descriptions of my Facebook, my Patreon, my PayPal. And don't forget to check out Fishing Clash today using my gift code Matsmus or the QR code on screen. I thoroughly hope you enjoy the game and let me know in the comment section what you think about it. Have a wonderful day everyone. All the best. Bye bye.